In today's world where everything is so busy and hectic and fast, I just feel like having a garden is a soft place to land. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So let's get going. Hi, I'm Erin Clark. I'm here at Clark Cottage Gardens. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be talking about the joys of gardening and what it has meant to me in my life. And I hope to inspire you all to go out and maybe start your own gardening journey. You don't have to have a big piece of property. You can start with a very small space. You can use containers, anything to just grow something. It really leaves you with a nice sense of accomplishment and peace and joy. And I want everybody out there to experience this. So shall we get going? I've got to go get my gloves and I'll meet you back out here. I wrote a blog post about the soulful journey of starting a garden and I thought I would share some of that with you here today while you watch me enjoying my garden. In a world pulsating with the hustle and bustle of modern life, there exists a tranquil haven that beckons with open arms, the garden. Embarking on the journey of starting a garden is akin to tuning into nature's soothing symphony, a melody that resonates with the deepest recesses of our souls. As you take that first step, a world of enchantment, growth, and profound connection unfolds before you, promising a tapestry of joys that only a garden can bestow. Imagine standing before an untouched canvas, awaiting the touch of your inspiration. A garden, too, is your blank canvas, inviting you to paint your dreams with hues of vibrant blossoms, textured foliage, and the promise of life. The joy of selecting each plant, envisioning their places, and mapping out your Eden evokes a sense of artistic liberation that breathes life into your surroundings. As I've said many times, I consider myself a garden artist. It's a place I like to express my creativity in the form of plants.
Gardening is a gentle reminder that life unfolds at its own rhythm. A dance of patience that teaches us to embrace the art of waiting. As you sow seeds and nurture saplings, you're not only cultivating flora, you're nurturing your own patience and resilience. Each tender shoot breaking through the soil is a testament to your commitment. And with every sunrise and sunset, you're a witness to the symphony of growth. visual beauty, but also in the healing balm it offers to weary souls. As your hands touch the earth, stress melts away like morning mist, replaced by a grounding energy that restores and rejuvenates. The simple act of tending to your garden becomes a ritual of self-care, a sanctuary where you find solace amidst the chaos of life.
Perhaps the most magical aspect of starting a garden is the connection it fosters with the earth, with yourself, and with others. Gardens are not merely landscapes, they're spaces that nurture relationships and memories. From lazy afternoons spent reading in the cottage shade to moments shared over freshly brewed tea with your favorite little furry friend, your garden becomes a tapestry woven with shared moments. symphony of life, a garden is a harmonious note that resounds with joy, patience, healing, and connection. It's an ongoing story you write with every sunrise, every raindrop, and every whisper of the wind. As you traverse this soulful journey, remember that your garden is not just an external oasis. It's a reflection of your spirit, a sanctuary where you embrace the beauty of growth in all its forms. So take up the trowel, Feel the earth's embrace and set forth on this exquisite adventure of starting a garden where every step brings you closer to nature's heart and your own. <laughs> Can you read? There you go. I just wanted to read a little part of this book that I've been reading today. It's called The Well-Gardened Mind. And it is by Sue Stewart Smith. And she writes about the restorative power of nature. It just kind of goes back to what you think when you think about a garden and how peaceful it is and how much it really can help your mental health. Um, and there's so many examples of it in here. I'm just going to read you a little part of it that I like. If Dahlia would <laughs> let me. Oh, oh, darling, you're so sweet. When it comes to the business of growing things, the mysterious world of plants can feel intimidating to newcomers who inevitably fear they might discover that they don't have a green thumb. The power of the illusion means that if your first foray into the world of seeds isn't successful, it can be more disheartening or deflating, even confirming fears like nothing ever works for me or everything I touch is doomed. This is why it is so important for children and for beginners to start gardening with something truly dependable, like sunflowers. Because in truth, all of us can make plants grow, given the right context in which to make the discovery. So I think that is just a great thought because so many people I know think that they can't garden, think that they can't grow seeds, think that they've got a black thumb and Truly, if you get out here and work and start with the simple things, it just becomes second nature after a while. There's just something about it that soothes your soul. I just feel like everybody should just give it a try. Of course, I'm a little biased, but you know, I think it, I think it should happen. 
Oh, let's see, I saw another little section in here that I wanted to read to you. Without some form of physical outlet, the effects of stress are liable to be internalized in a much more damaging way. Most forms of exercise help mitigate stress, but the more pleasurable or absorbing it is, the stronger the effect. Exercising outdoors is still better. It has been shown that green exercise as it is often called, is more effective at lowering stress levels and improving mood and self-esteem than going to the gym. So that's really good news. <laughs> the garden gets you going, and while you might count the minutes on an exercise machine, no one counts the minutes in the garden. It is not exercise time, it's gardening time. So I have to say that this just sort of goes to show what gardening can do for your mental health and your stress levels. Of course, a little furry pet is always good. <laughs> the combination is the best. Right, Dally? Yeah. We love the garden in the evening, don't we? It's so cozy. It's so cozy out here. I just wanted to thank you all for watching the video today. Uh, I hope you got something enjoyable out of it, some inspiration, some calming vibes, some desire to start your own garden or to keep working on the garden that you've already got. You can have your own little sanctuary right in your backyard. We're pretty happy tonight. We've worked hard. We just got done um, having some photographers over. We do like to open up our yard for people to come over and take professional photography here. We had a senior tonight and she was so thrilled to have her pictures taken among the flowers. She was just beside herself. So that really does my heart good when somebody can come over and really enjoy all the work that I put into this landscape and um, it just makes me feel good. Speaking of feeling good, I am going to be um, starting a special club. It's called the Cottage Garden Society and I'm going to be opening up for members very soon. Basically it is for people that love cottage gardens, which you can imagine, and for people that love the cozy things in life. Slow living, and cottage core, um, sipping tea, just taking in nature and uh, being kind. So if you are interested in being part of this community, I would love it if you would go to the description below and sign up to be notified as soon as we open the gates. I think it's going to be so much fun and I think it's going to be a very positive experience for me and um, for people that are interested in all of those things. So go down to the description below and sign up, please, with sugar on top. <laughs> right Dahlia? Can you say please? <laughs> we would love to have you. I think it's going to be the best community. Like. We're going to be best friends, right? All right. Thank you. Have a great night or a day, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Somebody took my chair. Mm -hmm. Is it you, my little friend? <laughs> Did you take mommy's chair? Mm -hmm. I see you peeking over the flowers. <laughs> Look at your teeth. <laughs> Are you smiling? <laughs> oh, that is funny right there. <laughs>